Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this thing here. This is the latest quad from Hollybro. This is the updated version of the Shuriken 180. Now, we have already looked at some of the other Hollybro quads, and we've been impressed with every one we've seen so far. We really like the big brother of this one, the Shuriken 250. That's one that's still here. There was only a couple of things that we commented on in terms of what we would like to change, things like the camera and others, but this is still one of the quads that's in our stable. The other quad that we really love is the Shuriken X1. Now this is an X-style racing quad and it has a fantastic setup, very easy to fly, absolutely oodles of power, and both of those models are pretty bulletproof. Now we didn't get the original Shuriken 180 because it was a little baby version of the Shuriken 250 that we'd already seen. The frame was very similar, but the 180 Pro is different enough to warrant a look. So before we get too far, let's have a look at how it comes in the box because unfortunately it doesn't come in the same kind of beautiful padded enclosure that the Shuriken 250 and the original Shuriken 180 did, but you get some extra bits and pieces first. So let's go and open the box, have a look at that. Then let's go and pick out the couple of things that have changed on here and what's different over the standard 180 that's been on sale for a little while. When we've done that, we'll have a look at beta flights, make sure it's all configured properly, then go and fly. So this is how it comes. It comes in this great big whacking white box. And when you open it up, this is what it looks like inside. You have uh, a manual, which is pretty good. It kind of tells you the basics of what you need to know. There isn't an awful lot that you can change your setup on these things, so that's fine. You get some extra little bits of piece of paper for spares, some extra stuff about a warning, some stickers. You can buy this thing with one of four receivers. So I think it's for Taba, Spectrum, and this one here is for FR Sky. So we're gonna bind it to our Tyrannus. So what all you get in the box, I say all, because actually it's still quite cool, is the holder for your camera, the model. You get a spare set of props. These are four bladed 4040 props. You get some extra bits and pieces that we'll talk about in a second. And you get your antenna. So let's get the box out of the way and we can talk a little bit more about this little guy. So you can see the quad itself is very, very similar to the 250 that we've already looked at on the channel. I'm just gonna screw the antenna in. I'm afraid I'm one of those people that, it's almost pathological now. I have to screw the antenna into uh, video transmitters. I just hate the look of them without. Now, this is actually quite a beefy little guy. Does have the warning at the back. We'll take that sticker off because we'll be plugging it in a second. Um, but gosh, you wouldn't want to get hit with this on the back of the head. It would, uh, it would certainly hurt. And this is very similar to how the 250 is. These things are pretty bulletproof. Now I've done some really stupid things in my 250 and every time it's just been completely happy. I've picked it up and it's been fine. So the first thing I'll do is let me just show you how heavy this thing is because I think for those who want a smaller quad that is very, very nippy and ultra durable, this is gonna be an option. So let's get the trusty kitchen scales out, pop it on there. So it's about 370 grams before we add anything else. As an example, let me just get the Shuriken X1. Let's take the camera off it. So again, with the antenna. Let's put that around, there we go. So that's about 350 grams. So this guy is actually, even though it's only a 180 class, is actually about 20 grams heavier. Now, I'm not particularly worried about that in terms of the weight because these motors in here have been significantly upgraded. So this is probably the point to talk about the specs. So all the detail that we're gonna go through is on the Hollybro website. There are three big changes in this little guy over the previous version. The first is that there is now a much better upgraded camera. The camera is a lot nicer now and it's a CCD Sony HS1177 style camera with a lovely, big, beautiful lens at the front. And that's going to be a much nicer camera to fly with. So looking forward to seeing what that looks like when we get it out there to fly. 
The other thing that's changed as well is the motors. On the original one, they were 1806 motors. We built a couple of quads actually with 1806 motors and they were fine. But 2205 has really become the standard now for 25330 class quads. These though are insane little beasties. These, believe it or not, are actually 2750 kV motors. Now, most of the quads we build here tend to run on 2205, 2300 kV, and that is more than enough power to get us into trouble. However, if we look at the Shuriken X1, that model has 2600 kV motors, and that has insane levels of performance. I love that, that's a great fun to fly. This little guy, has 2750. Now the props on here are very small and they've obviously gone to four bladed props to try and get the thrust up. The more blades that you have on your prop the less efficient they are but with a motor like a 2750 you know what you probably don't care. So although this guy is uh, is quite sturdy and again this is one I think we're going to be able to bounce around and it's not going to care um, Although it's quite sturdy, I don't think we're going to have a problem in terms of performance. The last change that we need to talk about is the fact that it now comes pre-flashed with beta flight. Fantastic. We are big fans of beta flight here. It goes on pretty much everything that we don't want INAV on. Uh, and that means that in terms of performance and setup and everything else, it's going to be a little bit easier. Last thing I'll talk about is the mount. So you get this mount that comes in the pack. This is kind of a GoPro session, although it will fit things like the Run Cam 3. Uh, and the way that works is you zip tie that onto the top. Uh, hopefully you can see that. You zip tie that onto the top of the enclosure for the camera, and then this goes over the top. The challenge that you have, let me just grab a camera, is uh, when we pop a camera into here, and kind of pop it into place. Admittedly, we haven't all cinched it down yet, but you can you can start to see one of the problems here. We, we're, the, the antenna is kind of peeking over the top of the camera. Now, when we tighten up the straps, the camera's gonna go in about another six, seven millimeters. But even so, you know, we're gonna have to uh, be looking over the top. I might swap this antenna out for one that's got a slightly longer neck, just so they've got a better chance of actually uh, seeing what I'm looking at. So to bind this to the radio is relatively easy and straightforward. You put everything into bind mode. Mine's got all the FR Sky bits and pieces here. The bind button is actually under this little spot here and it's all covered in the manual. So we're gonna bind that up to the radio and then what we'll do is let's connect this up to the computer and have a look at how it comes flashed out the box. Make sure that all the flight modes and everything else that we need is all set up and then we'll go out and give it a fly. Flying this thing is an awful lot of fun. The amount of power that these motors and props put out in terms of thrust is fantastic for such a small model. Now we're losing a lot of inefficiency. Now there's a lot of inefficiency in using such small props with four blades, but I'm guessing they used it so that you could actually get the power out this thing. Now this is a default tune as it comes out the box. It's very stable and very easy to control but it has a ridiculous amount of power. It gets up to pretty insane speeds and you can blip that throttle and change direction in a heartbeat. If I insert the camera in the bottom right hand corner, this is the view recorded in the DVR on my goggles, you can see that the camera by default is exposing a little bit too much of the sky. There is a cable in the kit that will allow you to change the settings. But for me, if I was going to be flying it in overcast conditions, I'd change that. The sunny days that I've had this flying out in, it's done a much better job. So just be aware of that. You might need to tweak the setting. Just to show you how resilient this thing is, this was another flight on that day. Again, it's quite overcast. The beeping you can hear is the low voltage alarm on my Fat Shark Dominator V3s. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it back in time. The battery gave up, screen went to black, and I just dumped the throttle. So in it went into the ground. The only thing that happened in that crash, and the only thing I've managed to break on this in all the little hiccups that I've had with it, has been this front prop and there are four spare props in the kit so swapping that over and everything was flying again. So let me sum up the things I like about this and some of the things that you probably need to think about. 
I do like the fact that this is built like a tank. It's exactly like the Shuriken 250, which we love. It's got a nicer camera than that. It has a lot more performance than that, but it does mean that you can bounce this thing around. It's too heavy to be an out and out racer, to be a contender for something like that, but it is very, very quick. The camera on it is quite a nice camera. It's a HS1177 style camera. It does have the on-screen display. You can change the settings. As I showed when we did the flight, just be careful when you're out in overcast conditions. In sunshine with direct light on the ground, it's fantastic. In slightly overcast conditions, as usual with most cameras, it struggles with the exposure for the ground. So unless you're really tilted over on this thing, then you're going to struggle to see the detail if you're in anything but bright sunshine. Things like the antenna and the camera mount have been improved from the original Shuriken 180. So now we can install not only something like the Runcam 3, which is what we've taken the video with, but we can also do things like put a standard GoPro in here too. Sadly, the mount isn't designed for using other style of action cam, things like the Chunji ones we have here, but a GoPro or a GoPro session or something like the Runcam 3 will fit fine. It comes pre-flashed with beta flight, which is great. It's what most of the latest and greatest stuff is starting to come flash with these days. And there are tons of videos and setup bits and pieces included on this channel to help you as a pilot tweak things if you want them to. However, straight out of the box, it actually flies pretty well. They've put a reasonable job of getting it all tuned. And finally, it is ridiculous fun to fly. You can flick it around, you can take it out of the box. Once you've bound it to your radio, made sure that all the channels are working, then you can go onto the field and have a blast. So there isn't a lot of setup for this. So if you're somebody that's looking for a really robust little model that you can get flying nice and quickly, and you don't have to worry about damaging stuff when you have a bit of a hiccup, then it's definitely something to think about. But there are a couple of things to consider. First of all is that it is built like a tank. It's not going to be everyone's cup of tea and having all the stuff internally does mean that changing and swapping things around or modifying it is going to be a little tricky. But if you're looking to do those kind of things, this probably isn't the model for you. There aren't any LEDs for orientation. So line of sight is tricky. As soon as it gets more than 20, 30 feet away from you, then unless you are paying very close attention, orientation starts to get a bit of a problem. So this is really designed as a little FPV, powerful acrobatic beastie rather than anything else. There isn't an on-screen display. Now, one of the things I was interested in with this is whether or not they'd taken some of the fantastic engineering that we've seen on the motherboard in things like the Hollybro X1 and included it in the new Pro version here. Unfortunately, there's none of those extra refinements that's on the X1. So in terms of monitoring the current, giving battery bits and pieces, all of that isn't available. I'm disappointed in that because that would have been a very welcome thing, particularly with the way this thing eats batteries. You can add an on-screen display using a Minim OSD, and there is a link to the manual for it, and the cables to connect it up to the various little ports on here are available in the kit as well. But a Minim OSD is an extra nine, 10 pounds. For the pro version, I'd have expected the on-screen display, if it was a Minim OSD board, to have been programmed and connected by the Hollybro team before it went out. The FPV power options needed a, another setting apart from the 25 or 600 milliwatts. A 200 milliwatt setting would have been a good choice. The fact that you have to change those settings using little jumpers feels a little archaic now. And there is room at the back with everything else to have a little button to change things like the power settings along with the band and frequency that you can already do. I'm hoping that when Hollybro come out with the next version of this, that that kind of functionality is included at the back. Little comment about the FPV antenna. In our flights, actually, even though it is pretty obscured by the battery at the back of it and the camera below and in front of it, we've got pretty good reception out of the antenna that's supplied. Having an antenna that was probably an inch longer uh, may or may not have made any difference, but in actual flying, we've not seen a problem. But do be aware of that if you're going to fit your own antenna. You don't want anything that isn't too short because it just simply won't fit in the space provided. Last thing to comment on is the amount of power that this little guy sucks out. I can get about four and a half minutes flight time if I'm not flying it aggressively on a 1300 milliamp hour 4S pack. If I'm flying it aggressively, then I get much less. So this also isn't one of those models. If you want to have a flight that's going to last eight to 10 to 12 minutes, this isn't going to do it. You need to set your timer on your radio for four minutes or less. If you're going to fly it like you stole it, 
but even if you are careful with how you fly and with your throttle, you won't get much longer than five minutes flight time out of it. So for those of you that may be thinking of getting this and trying another prop, last little comment I'll make is the props are designed to fit beautifully. They just miss the camera and they're designed to just miss the battery that you plot on top as too. You could potentially put a bigger battery on here for longer flight times. There is enough power for that if you wanted to fly for longer than five, six minutes. But this little thing is really designed to be flown aggressively for short periods of time with FPV goggles. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. We try and release at least two videos a week, usually a quick tip on a Tuesday and a more in-depth video on a Friday. And sometimes we manage to get a few more out as well. If you're interested in radio control, then the playlists are useful to have a look at. Anything that's called Introduction To is an organized set of videos that teach you from first principles about the subject that you're interested in. But we also have information about the majority of popular open source flight controllers, how to build quadcopters, fixed wing models, reviews, setups, unboxing, all kinds of things in here as well. So if you haven't already had a look at the playlist, then I'd recommend going have a look through here to see if there's anything that takes your fancy. Finally, we do also provide updates through things like Twitter, Instagram, and also post all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse as well. So if you like what we're doing here on YouTube, have a look at those things and subscribe to us there and you'll find out what we're up to in advance of the videos coming out here on the channel. It is slightly underexposing. There is a cable in the kit that will allow you to change the settings. It is slightly underexposing, and there is a cable in the kit that will let you change the settings. There is slightly underexposing. There is a cable in the kit that will let you change the settings.